Kiki Itamek Sistika, good day. It is 11.40 in the a.m. on Wednesday, hump day. <laughs> the 18th of October 2023, I believe, in the lunar cycle, Itautstoi, when the cold arrives. And I'm on the road with uh, <laughs> Taylor down here and Chris over here I don't know why she's not showing her face because <laughs> I feel wrong <laughs> <laughs> yeah she just got out she just got off of work she's not like uh, really like tried to make herself presentable for anything we're just off on a little adventure before she conks out and uh, <laughs> <laughs> falls asleep. She's trying to like, you know, go through, go through part of the day before she falls asleep today. Um, but that was the end of her shift. She's on her basically her weekend. So yeah, it's 11:40 in the a.m. and we are taking a little drive. We are headed to. Uh, what in English is known as Sundial Medicine Wheel or Sundial Butte and in Blackfoot is known as Bonoka Kokats and the, the Elk Sundance basically um, at least I think that's what it was called because the only the only record that we have of the language around this place is Onoka Gatsi. And I have, uh, I have, uh, well, we'll talk about it as we're going along here, but I have a very strong suspicion that this place is connected with the elk story in the origin of the Ogon. And in the language, an elk is Bonoka. And the Sundance is Ako Gatsun. It doesn't mean Sundance, it's really talking about a, like a circle camp sleep. But in any case, Onoka Gatsi uh, combined with other knowledge that I have of the place because I've, I've been up here with women who have run that ceremony and they recognize what's going on in this place as part of their tradition which is also part of mine because their, theirs is, is connected like, I'm a Iyach um, which means I belong to the water, and the, the elk story that I think is associated with this place um, comes through that beaver bundle tradition, <coughs> and is, is part of the evolution of what's currently the Ogon, which is the culmination of the, of the Orthodox Blackfoot Sundance. But in any case, um, there are alternate opinions about the place. Like, uh, my very good friend and actual partner on the Beaver Bundle, when you have, when you have a bundle, you usually have a husband and a wife and a, a bachelor that represents the morning star that's involved with it. You're basically, you're, you know, you're the, you're the sun and the moon and the morning star. And um, my morning star, the late Marvin Calfrobe, knew a lot about Blackfoot traditions and a lot about the stories like he and I 
were able to really grow together when we shared our knowledge base at, at the point that we did. And his opinion of this place and uh, his knowledge of it is that it's associated with a Nopi story. Um, the Nopi story where, where Nopi is sliding um, and there's, there's kind of a, a uh, like a, like almost like a witch, you know, if I think about German stories or something, like a Hansel and Gretel witch at the end that has really bony elbows that's gonna, that's gonna, uh, kill him with her bony elbows at the end. <laughs> but, you know, um, there's other, like, this place is not isolated, and I'll show that today, um, because there is the main, like, cairn that I, I still very much think is associated with the elk story and with, with femininity and the female, and you'll see why when we get there. It's going to be windy, it's going to be highly windy, so I'm probably going to narrate, like, on the road um, after we're there and then paste the narration over the top of the, the video while we're there because I know when we get there like there's going to be high winds and stuff and you're not going to be able to hear me on the site so I'm just going to record. But the, the Karen itself, um, the whole like, these, like when we say Karen, what, what the heck do we mean? Like a Karen is a pile of rocks. In Blackfoot, it's called Uxtuxin, which means it's just like assembled together. It's the same in English as it is in Blackfoot. Cairn, Pile, uh, you know, in, in Blackfoot is basically the same thing. They're assembled together. It's a pile of shit. So, Uxtuxin. But they're, they're more than that because they're actually uh, made as effigies to look like different things. So, Majorville Cairn, where um, the, my YouTube member Aaron had asked me to go for this month's um, mission, or what did I call it, uh, quest. Majorville Cairn is a sun, moon, and morning star effigy. Um, this particular particular effigy that we're going to today is a is a very feminine effigy you'll, you'll see and people have different opinions of you know what it actually represents when you look at it but you can make your own opinion when we get there um, but but for sure it follows the like the the way that it's designed follows the design of um, what's called the Ogoyas or the, the Ogon Lodge which is the, 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 the lodge that the woman at the, at the culmination of the Sundance fasts in for four days. It, it really looks like that lodge in its design and in the shape of its, like, um, the exit, the way that you transition out of there. But anyway, we'll get, we'll get to all of that when we get there. <laughs> I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but I'm excited to be on a road trip and shit. And, um, yeah, we're going to go see a Blackfoot sacred site. And then there's other stuff below it too with uh with really cool stuff to talk about so off to sundial butte quote unquote all right we're starting to get close so i think i'm gonna tell a couple of stories really quick that are associated with what we are gonna see <coughs> um Probably the first, well, I know, the first place we're going to come to is where I have seen that there is a cairn on top of a hill as we drive in toward the Sundial Butte. There's another hill with a cairn, and 
you know, this is often the case at these sites, you know, there's the, there's the one main uh, effigy that everybody knows about, but if you really look around, there's a lot of other stuff, and I'm going to show you some other stuff at this site. So the first one we're going to come to, um, the way that I recognized that there was something up there was because there's skunkbrush sumac growing on the top of the hill. And skunkbrush sumac is a plant that grows, um, like you see it almost, if you're looking at the coolie slopes from a distance, skunkbrush sumac looks like freckles on the side of the coolie or moles or something like that. But uh, uh, when you see it right on the top of the hill and there's a, there's a pile of it, you should maybe go check it out because chances are there's something up there there's like a there's like an effigy up there and the birds when they go and they stand on the rocks of the effigy they poop out the berry seeds of the skunk breast sumac and it grows there and it likes that kind of rocky like uh, exposed kind of thing so I don't know it's just one of those Every single cairn I've ever been to, long established big cairn, has skunk brush sumac growing on it. So that's the way it is, and that's one way to, to spot these sites. Um, and then we're going to go see the sundial itself. And that's related to a, a couple of different stories. Um, well, like I was saying, oh, and I want to correct myself. I, w I mentioned that that my late friend Marvin had said that this site was related to a Noppy story uh, with the slide, and it is. But it's not the one with the with the with the witch with her elbows. That's actually. Um, that's actually a story with some twin witches with elbows, and it's a different it's a different story. This one, the witch was trying to. Um, well, there's still a witch, but <laughs> at the end of the slide, but she's trying to get him. She's trying to get this the slide to swing him out to a danger point where he's going to kill himself coming off of the slide. And he notices this, and he's able to divert his sled so it goes in the opposite direction, and then he ends up uh, killing the witch, which is, you know... Oh, this is not a Nappi story, a Katoyas story. Jeez, I'm fucking retarded today. I've been saying Nappi all the way along. I mean Katoyas. Katoyas is, uh, is kind of like the Blackfoot Hercules. Not, not like Nappy. Nappy's a fuck up. I mean, people, people say, well, Nappy the, is a, the creator. Um, but yeah, but but usually through his mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about Gatoyes, man. All right, so I've corrected myself. We're talking about the Gatoyes and the sled story here, and basically that's it. He, he hears, Katoyas is one that travels the land, and um, he's specifically looking for uh, where are these threats to the people, where are these uh, beings that might be taking advantage of, of people and stuff like this. And so he's guided to this area and encounters this... Um, old lady who has this sled thing going on and what she's typically used to doing is putting people on the sled running them down the hill and into a danger point where they die and um and then Katoyas you know already is is predicting that there's going to be a problem here so uh, he's not fooled at all. He sees the danger thing, and he diverts his sled and, you know, kills the witch. Um, I don't, 
like my friend Marvin, he, he was pretty sure that that was what this site is about. I don't think it is. Um, the reason I don't think it is is because number one, there's not a really obvious danger point at this site for this to be really that site. Uh, for him to be sledding down and having a problem. And the other thing is because it's an effigy. And you're going to see it's, you know, the way that it's designed and stuff. Um, you'll see what I, you'll see what I mean. But yeah, we're just turned in toward the way we need to be going. I can see it at the top of the hill way out there. In fact, I'm going to get my other camera out so I can show you, like, from a distance even, uh, what it looks like. Oh, this dog. <laughs> God dang. Taylor keeps letting go the worst dog farts. <laughs> she quickly looks at me. <laughs> she sneezes. Yeah. Uh, uh. Okay, let me show you this from a distance. <laughs> All right, so as we recover from the fart, <laughs> that's where we're ultimately headed. Right up there. But before we get there, I'm gonna show you this other, this other spot. There's probably lots out here, actually. I haven't explored it all. <clears throat> I've, uh, I've camped out here with students on the summer solstice because one of the things about this particular site is uh, people say that the you know, most of the most of the Blackfoot lodges have entryways that are toward the east, toward the sunrise. But the entryway on this one kind of moves toward the south. But they're assuming that this is a lodge is the is the problem I'm going to propose. And so what they conjectured was because it headed toward the south a bit that this was a. Um, a lodge that was aligned with the summer solstice and so I had a group of students and I camped out here one time on the summer solstice to find out if that in fact was the case and the Sun rose not at all aligned not even if we not even if we say uh, maybe it was built you know 10,000 years ago and the Sun was rising in a different place it was way offline with the solstice. It has nothing to do with the solstice. It's better to look at the design of the rock and and I believe and make your assessment uh, from there as to what's going on. It's not a lodge. Um, unless you count it as the Okoyas, uh, which is a lodge, but it you know it's also uh, probably an effigy in itself. The story that I associate with this site is the second evolution of the Okan, which involved the elk, the large elk herd that moves, you know, along the mountains um, that we associate now with Waterton and Glacier Park. And at one time there was a really a bad sickness, like a plague that came among the elk. And um, there was a cow elk who had a dream that she was supposed to go to the camp of the people 
of the humans and do this ceremony that they do and it would cure the plague for the elk and so she talked to her bull elk husband about it and um, decided that she was going to actually set out and do this and she was going to travel to the humans and while she was traveling part of what the dream told her is she was supposed to fast and so she started making her way and as she made her way you know she encountered other elk and stuff and because she was alone she was vulnerable and so she would get these encounters with bull elk um, <coughs> who were interested in her because she was alone and she always kind of you know fought them off um, as she was going along she had her first encounter, um, well, she had several encounters, hey? Let's just say she had four encounters. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what the official story says. And she, ha she had uh, these encounters. And um, when she had these encounters, of course, there were witnesses, hey? And not everybody liked the elk. Like, not everybody was, in the, in the whole, like, eco world was a big fan of the elk. For instance, there's this plant called bonogaos and elk food that gets eaten by elk that don't really, you know, aren't particularly happy with the elk. And uh, so certain plants and animals um, started going to her husband, that bull elk, and telling him, hey, we saw your uh, wife over there. <laughs> and she was fooling around with another guy. And uh, so, you know, the first couple of reports, he totally, he didn't believe it, you know. And then by like the third report, he started to be like, hmm, you know. And then by the fourth report, uh, he was convinced, you know. His, uh, his lady's cheating on him. So he went to go find her. And uh, he, tra he traveled and pretty quick. He wasn't fasting or anything. I mean, she's fasting the whole way and having to fend off these, these uh, approaches by bull elk. <laughs> so he catches up with her before she reaches the human camp. And, um, and he confronts her about the allegations and he's mad, hey, he's making a big display and he like rams his head against this tree because he said like the equivalent of, you know, punching your drywall, right? <laughs> That's what this guy does. And um, he's, he's making a big display and that just pisses her off because this whole time she's been like, you know, she's been going about her thing appropriately and so she's very upset about the accusations and when when he makes a big display she decides she's gonna make a big display back and she rams that tree and knocks it down compared to his little shake in the tree thing you know and so basically in that display um, she wins and this is you know this is the way an animal world in general like you know rather than actually fight a lot of times it's it's a it's a it's a contest of display <laughs> so anyway she showed uh, that you know how uh, both how you know powerful she was and like you know she wasn't taking his shit and uh, she didn't confess to nothing and she went on her way to go do the ceremony and you know freak the people out but um, it happened she did the ceremony and she uh, gave a headdress 
to the beaver bundle um, at that time. And she told the people that in the following year, there would be, when they did the ceremony again themselves, there would be a sign uh, of, you know, how powerful the things that she added to the ceremony were because on the headdress that she gave are a lot of, uh, like, when, when she proved herself right to her husband, all those animals that went and accused her, they had to give something, okay, for having lied on her. And so that's all in the headdress that she gave to the to the beaver bundle that's still part of the current headdress that's now called the Natoas today but back then it was it was the elk's headdress and um, and uh, so she said there would be a sign when you do the ceremony the next year there's going to be a sign to show you you know how powerful that this was and, uh, and, you know, to use the things that I gave. And so um, she did the, the ceremony and, you know, went on her way. And then the next year, the, the people did the ceremony. And when the, when the woman came out from her fast, from her four-day fast in the Ogoyas, which the, the, the lodge that she stays in that I'm, that I'm telling you is, you know, according to the to the women who actually run that ceremony, is associated with this site. Hey, um, like they can recognize their their lodge in this site. Um, so when she came out of her lodge that that year, um, the the human that ran the ceremony, out of the sky dropped an elk robe that. Uh, ended up becoming the robe that's still worn today by the woman that, that runs that ceremony. And my understanding is the site where that happened was what, you know, is this site, mm -hmm. hey? This is the site where the elk robe comes down, hey? So that's, that's my understanding, what's associated with this site. And it may or may not be uh, the case, but um, a lot of, like, I visited this site while working with Red Crow College um, many times over a decade or so and a lot of uh, there was a lot of experiences that students and staff had associated with this site uh, that are that are very uh, female oriented experiences and dreams and stuff to deal with pregnancies things like that hey? um, and in fact the, that part of what the elk gives to the Ogon um, through that plant Bonogawaxin is a traditional um, birth control um But, you know, also I think this site, like, as far as the, the females that have come up here when I've been involved in it, like, I mean, it, it's not just birth control, but, but uh, around birth in general, okay, that, um, that this site has something to do with. So down here is an old campsite area where there's a boulder set up that looks like a bison calf and nearby there are a bunch of teepee circles and stuff so we know people camped here and it's no coincidence that that boulder looks like a bison calf uh, one time I came down here with a blood tribe elder and I have this story recorded on another video as an entirely separate video that you can watch in length. I'll put a um, link in the description here. But um, I had known previous to that visit 
I had known Iniskim buffalo stones as the, you know, small fossils that are used in ceremony and associated with bundles and such. And um, visiting out here, uh, it was impressed upon me that Iniskim is actually, and I should have known this from the start because it was told to me, I just didn't really understand it that uh, when I was transferred in this game initially, it was told to me. But, uh, yeah, there's TP circles right here. Let's stop and get out. Um, yeah, I'm gonna show you that rock here in a minute. But anyway, yeah, it was impressed upon me at, at this point out here that Iniskim is really about the hunting technology change that went from endurance hunting, like running down bison in the in the wolf tradition, to um, basically being able to deceive them with Iniskim, um, being able to uh, to draw them in, so you didn't have to chase. And uh, the elder here showed me this in, this Iniskim and then showed me that he, he suggested that, and there's a fuller version of this story if you want to hear it, it's, uh, it's worth listening to, but he's, uh, once we saw this one, he said, I, I bet if we just go down into the coulee here, there's another one, and uh, sure enough, and that was to draw the bison down into the coulee so that the hunters could, you know, ambush them from the tops, okay? So we'll take a look at that. Um, <clears throat> right out the door here, we are gonna look at some of those teepee rings. <coughs> Taylor. Whoops. TP rings are called MoMA beasts in black form. MoMA beasts. over there by the truck. Another one out here. There's quite a few deep rings around. Yes. 